Audience attention. Color guard advance. Halt. Color guard pre uh, present colors. Post the colors. Color guard dismissed. veterans uh, because tomorrow is actually Veterans Day but since we won't be here we wanted to honor them today. Uh, World War I lasted from 1914 to 1918 and the U.S. fought in that war from 1917 to 1918. On November 11, 1918, Germany signed an armistice with the Allies which is a ceasefire. It didn't officially end the war. But people around the world celebrated as this was supposed to be the war to end all wars. World War I officially ended with the Treaty of Versailles on June 28, 1919. A year later, King George V of England proclaimed November 11th Armistice Day to be marked with two minutes of silence at 11 a.m. the hour the agreement had gone into effect. That's why we commemorate November 11th each year. In 1938, President Woodrow Wilson made an official holiday in the United States, a day set aside to honor World War I veterans. In 1954, President Dwight D. Eisenhower and Congress changed the name from Armistice Day to Veterans Day, as we know it now. Other countries celebrate the end of World War I as well, but they call it Remembrance Day. On Veterans Day, we honor veterans of all the wars who have served the country in wartime and peacetime, both those who have died and those who are still alive. On Veterans Day, we especially thank living veterans for their sacrifices. Veterans Day is a special holiday that honors all those who have served and are now serving in the United States military. Today, thousands of military personnel in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, and Space Force are on the job around the world protecting America. We come together today to thank and honor all those who have chosen to protect us. We also remember those who have passed away, and Mrs. Willems would like to share with us some special items and thoughts about a special veteran, her father. When my father went into the Army, he was drafted. He was a young man. He was only 24 years old. He was not married or anything. 
And this is his coat from when he was in the Army. This coat is 82 years old. And um, when my father came home, he was gone for four years. So in four years, there was no phone calls. There was no coming home for Christmas. There was no visits. So that's longer than from the time you start the school until you're done with this school. So he was gone for a long time. If you come to the library and want to see, there's pictures of him there with some of the weapons he used. And um, I have pictures of him with his mother when he got home. So this was before he was ever married, before I was ever born. So, and then he came home and he lived his life and had his family and did all the things people do. And when he passed away, because he was a veteran, they honor him and put these great big flags over their caskets and have the other veterans around the area come and carry his casket and they honor him with what they call the 21 gun salute. So it's a very moving, memorable ceremony. The veterans always stick together. So you're never forgotten. Um, the banner I have hanging in the library, that's to honor him. When you see those around town, there's a book in the library that shows all the pictures of the veterans from our area that have banners that hang in the town. So everyone appreciates all veterans all the time. They're never forgotten. Thank you. Um, and there are many veterans still alive today that fought in the wars. Uh, we still have 120,000 World War II veterans with us. We have 767,000 Korean veterans uh, with us. We have 5.6 million Vietnam veterans that are with us. And we have 7.8 million uh, Gulf War veterans uh, that are still alive. So we think of all those who are still with us and we want to make sure we keep praying for them. We've asked for veterans' names from our parishes and students, and so we would like to recognize those now. And actually, we have one with us. He came, so thank you for coming. His name is Richard Steckler. He was U.S. Army from 1959 to 1962. He served in Germany at the Berlin Wall. Uh, we have Robert Bly, Master Sergeant, U.S. Army, served 13 years. James Barton, MT-1SS, he was a U.S. Navy Submarine Service Missile Tech from 1962 to 1969. Howard Poggles, U.S. Army, 1942 to 1945, World War II. General Mark Anderson, U.S. National Guard, 1983 to 2018. Mrs. Woolen's father, Kenneth Jensky Sr., by the first class, U.S. Army, served 1941 to 1945, World War II, Philippines and Australia. We have with us Father Robert Scheller, who was in the U.S. Marine Corps Sergeant from 1975 to 1979, and was a U.S. Navy Chaplain from 1992 to 1995. My husband, Mr. Ted Springer, um, he was in a U.S. Army Specialist E4 from 1968 to 1970, and he served in Germany and Vietnam. Mrs. Bridal's grandfather, Robert Friday, was in U.S. Navy, retired. Brian and Erin Dolan's great grandfather, James Dolan, U.S. Navy, retired. Brian and Erin Dolan's great grandfather, James Richardson, U.S. Air Force, retired. Brian and Aaron Dolan's brother, Sean Dolan, U.S. Navy, he is on active duty. Brian and Aaron Dolan's sister, Grace Dolan, U.S. Air Force, active duty. They were some of our students, just like you are now. Kinsey Olnick's father, Tony Olnick, uh, private second class, U.S. Army, 1988 to 1989. Freddie Hot his mom, his dad, his stepmom, his brother, and great-grandfather all have served in the military. Cecilia Lynch's grandfather, 
Joanna Becker's grandfather, Aaron Morico's father, Andy Kramer's uncle, Chloe Zinda's cousin and family friend. We also have Mason Meyer's grandfather, James Arthur Haas, Sergeant U.S. Air Force Vietnam War. Lena Petch's great-grandfather, Robert Orheim, Private First Class U.S. Army, 1950 to 1954, served in the Korean War. Lita Petch's great-grandfather, Don Weiss, Corporal, U.S. Marine, 1952 to 1954. Hazel, Wink Hazel Winker's great-grandfather, David Grosscheck, U.S. Army. Hazel Winker's uncle, David Grosscheck, U.S. Army. Heidi Dean's great-grandfather, Martin Spey, U.S. Army, World War I. Heidi Dean's great-grandfather, Her Harry, who was actually part of the Royal Canadian Air Force in World War I. Heidi Dean's grandfather, J. Richard Dean, U.S. Army, World War II. Also, her uncle Josh is in the, was in the Army Reserves for two tours in Iraq. And her uncle David Gildenzoff was in the U.S. Navy. Willow Hoffman's great-grandfather, Charles Hepp, U.S. Army. Zach and Caleb Stofflet's relative, Snook Stofflet, was U.S. Marine. Uh, we also have a great-grandfather, Harry, who was in World War II. Uh, Teresa Zerflu and Joey Zerflu were in the U.S. Army. John Rayburg were in the Korean War, and those are all relatives of Mrs. Jablonski's class. Uh, Mrs. Jablonski's grandfather, Gordon Lau, was in the U.S. Air Force in the Korean War. Mrs. Jablonski's relative, Lawrence Butler, was U.S. Army, Vietnam. Skylar Monahan's relative, Spence Whetstone, U.S. Air Force. Anna Menarsen's relative, John Menarsen, World War II. Kelly Noyes, relative, Dwayne Noyes, U.S. Navy. Abby and Anna Grauman's relative, William Grauman, Korean War. Joey Moyer, U.S. Marines, active duty. Joey was also one of our students here at St. Vincent. Kyle Steele, he was a military plane technician. Augie Rivera, U.S. Army. Mrs. Ra Mr. Rails' uncle, David Rails, U.S. Army, 1967 to 1970. Dave Gaffert, U.S. Army and U.S. Marine Sergeant, and he was an MP and a paratrooper from 1985 to 1989. Jeff Schuel, Lieutenant, U.S. Marines, 2012 to the present. And Mrs. Rails' uncle, John Schuler, U.S. Navy Sergeant, 1948 to 1952. And I'm sure we also have many others that well, I just didn't get a name for us, so, but keep all your relatives and friends and neighbors in your prayers who have been in the service. May God bless all our veterans, living and deceased. So we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God, we ask for blessings on all those who have served this country in the armed forces. We ask for healing for the veterans who have been wounded in body and soul, in conflicts around the globe. We pray especially for the young men and women who return home with injured bodies and traumatized spirits. Bring solace to them, O Lord. May we pray for them when we cannot pray. We ask for an end to wars and the dawning of a new era of peace. So as we go forth, again, we're gonna remember all our veterans, but before we go, I asked Father Scheller if he'd do a final blessing. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we give you thanks for those men and women who have sacrificed their lives in service for our country, some in the years in which they served, and some indeed with the giving of their lives in defense of freedom around, in our, for our country and around the world. We give you thanks for the freedoms that we enjoy in this country, and may you always preserve our country in justice and in freedom. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you all. And again, as you go through the, your day tomorrow, please remember to stop and think of the veterans. 
especially that time at 11 o'clock is when most people stop and kind of think about that and keep them all in your prayers. Um, we're gonna let the teachers take one class at a time and I think it looks like the third grade is closest so maybe we'll let Mrs. Washausen start leading us in. Oh, I'm sorry, wait, wait, yep, I forgot one thing, sorry. <laughs> I forgot. Thank you for reminding me. Because you guys have all practiced this with Mrs. Erdman. Erdman, yeah? So. Sing out loud and strong. 